Hello, everyone. One of the things that I often hear is that people struggle with their workflow. As someone that runs a portrait studio, I wanted to share with you guys a typical workflow for me and share some of the tips that I've learned to help speed up the process so I don't spend as much time behind the computer. So let's start at the beginning. The first thing that we're gonna wanna do is cull through these images and get them down to a manageable size to be able to show my client. I typically give my client anywhere from 40 to 80 images, and that's dependent upon a lot of different things, how long the session was, how many kids were in the family, but I definitely want them to be a smaller number so that I don't overwhelm my client too much. Culling can be as long, a long a process as, as adding your presets sometimes. If you shoot 500 to 1,000 images, and, and let's be honest here, we're shooting digital, that is not uncommon, especially somebody like me who's shooting kids, then the kid is running from me, I tend to be a little happy shutter. And so I will start with a pretty heavy chunk of images that I'm trying to narrow down. One of the, tr the tips that I've learned is if, if you edit by choosing your favorites, rather than trying to take away the bad ones, that can get you to a smaller set a lot faster than trying to do it the other way around. So let's, so let's do that. So I have, I have 200 images here that I wanna cull through. You can do this a couple different ways. You can open the, the photos one at a time and you can arrow through them in detail view. I use the star system, so I five star rating the ones that I wanna keep. So if you're going through them, you can just hit a five star on the ones that you like. If they're blurry, you can skip over them, and you can go through them one at a time. With 200 images, that wouldn't take me very long. If I started with 500 to 1,000, going through them one at a time might take quite a bit of time. So the suggestion that I would make is I like to go through and grab series or sets that are similar or almost the same, select them, and pull them into compare mode. So I'm going to hit a C to go into compare mode. Let's close this left browser so we can see what we're looking at here. And I will look at them this way. And then I will grab, so change the selection. You can just arrow, click through them or you can arrow through them. I'm going to grab the one I want to keep and go ahead and five star that. And then I'm going to escape back to grid view and I'm going to grab the next set. So we'll grab the next series that looks similar, head into compare mode. From these, I think I will keep this silly face over here and I will keep this one here and then I'm going to head back. By doing this, you're pulling just a couple, one or two from each series because the client's not going to see, need to see all of these. So I'm going to grab the, the favorite out of it and move on to the next set. Okay. If there's a series that I really enjoy, like you're getting into these uh, bathtub sets, I would probably keep a chunk of them. And that's partly because I have in mind to either do a collage for my client or if I'm doing an album for them and I want a nice little album page. I would heavily go through these and keep a series or a set that are similar. Actually, let's clear that one out. So I'm kind of quickly going through these while I'm talking here and five-starring the ones that I want to keep. Let's keep that one. Let's go down. I'm going to scroll down here. Um, and I've already went through this a little bit, so I've grabbed a bunch so we can get through this a little bit quicker. And you can see that they have their star ratings. Uh, one thing I should have pointed out is I have down here, I have them sorted by file name. The other thing that you can do is change this and have it set to date captured so that they're in order. If you have multiple cameras or uh, different people shooting and you need to have them organized differently, definitely get those in order so it's faster to go through them. Uh, when you're in compare mode, another little fun little trick, um, a lot of times I'll go through and deselect the ones that I don't want. So if you're going through ones and you want to see which one's blurry and you know you don't want that one, you know you don't want that one, um, I know I don't want this one, and they kind of get bigger as you're going. Let's take this one away. And now we're down to these, so I'm going to go ahead and keep that right one. So that's another quick way if you have a few that are very similar and you're having a hard time deciding. So once I have these down to the five stars that I want to keep, I'm going to go ahead and go down here and change the sort to by rating. And I'm going to make these thumbnails a little smaller. Okay, and now let's go up just a little bit, a little too small there. Okay, you can see all of the stars that we have. So I'm going to take all of the other images, I'm going to select them all, and I'm going to go ahead and delete them. Now, 
full disclosure here, I have a backup of all of these. So if something happens, I would make sure that you keep your originals. I'm gonna delete all of those. And that pulls us down to my set. You can see up here, I have 46 images for my client. So the next part's my favorite part. Once I have them down to my favorites, let's go ahead and switch this back to file name so they're back in order. And I'm gonna go ahead and select all and clear the rating for now so we don't need to see the stars because I know that these are already ones that I'm picking. Okay, so we're gonna open up this left browser and I'm gonna start adding presets. So I've already went through and created the presets that I want. I know which ones I'm planning on using for this job so it makes it a little bit faster. And I'm gonna add all of these within browse and then just make changes as needed. So the fastest way to get through this for me is to go ahead and start at the beginning you can see that I have these definitely in sets or series or things that look similar. So that's what makes this a little bit quicker. So let's start with our first image. I'm gonna go into my summer presets. Actually for this one, let's go back. Let's go to the soft and muted. And I think Linux probably is the winner for this one. Linux or June. I'm gonna grab Linux looks a little bit brighter. And we'll go ahead and click on that and add it. You can see that's added my little badge. And then I'm gonna grab all of these, since they're all similar, and go ahead and click again on it and add it to all of them. I'm gonna go to the next set. So we'll grab this one. And on the ones that they're in the bubble bath, I had already intended to do those black and white. So I'm gonna go grab my lavender tea. And let's grab the whole bathtub set. We'll click on the lavender tea and it's gonna apply it to all of those. And you can see, I'll just keep going. I'll grab the next one in the series. Let's go back to my soft and muted. And I think for this one, I'll probably go back to, let's do Esme on this one. So it's a little bit lighter. Let's look at that a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna pull that open in detail view. So we got a nice soft look on that one. So I'm gonna grab all of that same series. Another way, if you wanna click on the preset, you can too. You can also right click on the image that you just added it and select sync settings. You can always copy and paste settings if that's easier for you, whichever is the quickest for you to get to. So I'm gonna sync it across those. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add just a cute couple more here. Let's go back to my other set. We'll add a lavender tea here. Let's do a black and white here as well. And then I'm gonna do one here. Let's do a peach bellini on this last one here. Okay, so I did this a little quickly, but I would go through and make sure that everything had the preset that I wanted on it. And then I would go back through my files and make a few changes. So sometimes my presets look great. Sometimes they are gonna need a little adjustments, but it should make it fairly easy if you kind of keep it within the sets. So let's grab this last one. So I'm gonna grab this one and pull her into effects. So it's a little softer than I like. I kind of want to sharpen this up a little bit. It's got a little bit of a haze in here that I don't care for. <clears throat> so I'm gonna take the glow and I'm gonna pull that glow back a little bit. Okay, and then I'm gonna add a filter and go ahead and add a sharpening filter. And then I will change this to a portrait sharpen. Okay, so now we have our before and after. And then we'll head back to browse. That pops that a little bit more, that's a little bit better. And then I would grab the same images that are in that set and go ahead and sync them. So now they've all got that same effect with the changes rather than just grabbing the preset. And then I'm gonna grab another one. I wanna do this on a couple of them. So let's grab this one. This is one of my favorites. I'm gonna pull her into develop. And uh, let's brighten that exposure just a little bit, add a little bit of contrast. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of structure. So we sharpen that up. And then you can see that she has a couple little spots on her nose. I typically will not go through and retouch every single photo that I'm gonna give a client. I try to wait until the, they choose the ones that they're gonna order and those are the ones that I will retouch. 
But on a winning shot, like this is one of my favorites, I will go ahead and take the time to make a little bit of retouching on it just so that image will pop a little bit. So I'm going to grab the clone stamp. I'm going to turn that feather all the way up to 100, opacity at 100. I'm going to click to select the area, and we're going to stamp right over that. So I got just three little spots here. Let's make that brush size a little bit smaller for the last one. That on there. All right. Still got a little spot on there. It's a little tricky when the color is a little bit different. All right, let's put that in fit view. And then we're going to head back to browse. So that looks a little bit better. You can see the before and after on that. So we brighten it up a little bit. We head back to browse. We're going to go back to the main view here. And then since I did make changes to that, I do want it to match the other ones. So I'm going to select that same set. You don't have to worry about the retouching. The retouching is only on photo by photo basis, so that's not going to sync. But we'll go ahead and sync those settings so they match. Okay, we're going to continue. So keep in mind, you're going to go through and spend as much time. I've, I've only spent a couple minutes here, and I'm about halfway done with this. Um, depending on how much time you have and how many different presets you're adding, I try to keep things somewhat similar on a job. Um, I know if you're shooting high school seniors or something, you can kind of get away with more fashion looks and more different stuff. But when you're shooting a kid, I'm definitely thinking of consistency, uh, similar looks and styles. I'm thinking of albums. I'm thinking of that end result. So I kind of want to keep those presets as simple as I can and keep that look and feel the same throughout the shoot. So once I have them to this point, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and do a batch rename. So you see these crazy numbers that every camera has? I like to have all of my numbers very simple. So I want them to have my client's name and then 001, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, etc. The, the file name gets imprinted on the back of my prints from my lab. So that works really great when a client gets photos and they want to order more. They can just flip those over and let me know what number they want, as well as it's simpler for me when I'm placing their order. Trying to, to write all these numbers is a little bit crazy. So let's go ahead and select all. We're going to right click and we're going to rename these files. So I'm going to change this to text. And typically I'll use the client's name if their name is really long or if I want to shorten that up a little bit. I, for this one, I'm just going to put girls. And then I'm going to add one more area and I'm going to change this to serial number and 001. So they're going to rename just like you see here, girls 001 all the way up to 46. So I'm going to hit apply. Okay, so we have all of our files renamed. And then my very last step is I'm going to go ahead and export these out. So I do two different exports. So I have them all selected, so I'm going to go ahead and open up export. My first export that I do is getting smaller, lower res files that are in sRGB that I can use for the web. If you do online sales, this is a great place to do it. I use it for Animoto slideshows. Uh, if you're posting on Facebook or social media and you need those smaller res files with your settings baked in, this is exactly what you're going to do. So I'm going to open up export. I'm going to turn on photo size. And I'm going to change this so that it's the long edge. And we're going to do 1500 pixels. I, I usually do somewhere between 1500 and 2000, depending on what you're using them for. If you have a pixel dimension that you're staying within, just make sure you put that in here. I do want a JPEG. These were shot in Adobe RGB, but since I'm using them for the web, I'm going to change them to sRGB. I'm going to direct it to the folder that I want to save it in. So you're probably not going to want to save it in the current folder, but create a folder that's for your web. And down here, since we did a rename, let's go ahead and reset that so it's nice and fresh. So that should be empty. We're not doing any rename. We did that not here. And then we'll export those out. Okay. Then the second time after those are done, I will go in and I'm going to go ahead and export out a final set of images with everything baked in. 
Now, I know that we're non-destructive. You can go back here and make changes, especially after your client orders. If you need to go make any adjustments, you're able to do that, and that's great. But I like that one extra set of files that I can save that has everything done, everything baked in, just in case. It's my safety net. So if a client comes back 10 years down the road and wants to make an order, I have the files that they need. So I'm going to take off photo size. So we're going to to export out the full res file. I'm going to go ahead and keep it as a JPEG. And I'm going to do back to Adobe RGB. So I have the file or the color space that I need. My lab is Adobe RGB. So that is why I use that as well as that is what I photograph in. And then I would save that into the folder that would say finals. And then I would export that out. It's always good for me, I think, to have that extra backup. I take that finals. I put it on a backup hard drive so that I have it. Um, like I said, it's good if clients want to come down the road and want to be able to do something with that. Probably um, the hardest part of this whole workflow was the culling process, as you probably noticed. The rest of the stuff is fun and should go pretty quickly. Uh, there's another video that I did about organizing your presets. That is a must. I have all of my presets in categories that are perfect for me to get to. That makes this process a lot faster and easier to get uh, my stuff added. Some of this is practice, some of this is knowing ahead of time kind of what I want my images to look like and kind of what effects that I'm going to add to them. That comes with practice, that comes with, you know, different locations or knowing kind of the, the look that's the bliss look for me that I want to add. Each of those things, though, as you get a little bit better at them, they'll get faster and easier to, to, to get through your workflow. Um, I hope this helps. I hope you're able to, to pull a few tips out of it. Uh, I encourage each of you to take some time to work on your workflow and find some improvements so that you can get through it a little bit faster.